How many of you have been using Siri and Alexa? Alexa was the time. Alexa, switch on the music. Alexa, switch off the lights. We are pretty much used to all these, right? Have you been surprised to see the advertisement of your choice coming on Facebook, even though you did not enter anything? Has predictive text of Google surprised you? Guys, we are already there. Welcome to the world of artificial intelligence, AI. Hello, everybody. And once again, welcome to my channel, Synonomics. By now, you have understood the topic I'm going to cover today. Yes, you got it right. Artificial intelligence, AI. This has been creating a lot of buzz everywhere. Be it stock market, be it education, be it job market, everywhere. So let's look into that. You'll be surprised to know that artificial intelligence is not new. The term artificial intelligence was coined way back in 1956. Yes, you have heard it right. In 1956 by John McCarthy, who defined artificial intelligence as the science and engineering of creating intelligent machines. So we know that. So artificial intelligence is pretty much a technique of creating machines who can work like human. But what about the other buzzwords like machine learning, deep learning, generative AI, etc.? Well, let's look into that. See, if we consider a space of artificial intelligence, which as I described, is the science of making machines who can emulate human behavior, a subset of that is machine learning. So machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence which focuses on machines that can make decisions based on the data we feed. And deep learning is a subset of machine learning which uses neural networks to solve complex problems. And then comes the next level, which I will call discriminative AI and generative AI. Yes, you heard it right. The part of the deep learning is discriminative AI, which is very much to deal with the systematic data layering, structured data, the text and other things that we just talked about and there's a generative AI which is more exciting because it generates data for you. Yes, you heard it right guys. It will generate data for you. And this whole generative AI was ignited by chat GPT and Google Bard. If you have not used that, I'll sincerely recommend you to go open an account in chat GPT and start using it. Experience it. I'll give a small example. If you want to say, hey, it's a beautiful morning out there, write a poem and it will write a poem for you. If you ask it to produce music, it will produce music for you. Not only that, it can actually generate code, codings, yes guys, codings. And simplest of all, you can try this out. You just write, hey, I'm applying for XYZ company. The companies Involved, is involved in whatever industry and here are my educational and experiences educational qualification and experiences please create a cover letter for me and you'll be surprised in no time the whole cover letter will come up not only that we also talk about the large language models Large language models are basically the models behind this generative AI. The more data you have, the better generative AI model you'll have. So, so these, these models actually train the data so that it can generate the data of your choice. So it's all about large language models, training the data and inferencing out of it. Now, when I go further down, in the generative AI, 
there are two types of that. One is the language AI, another one is image generative AI. The one that I had covered recently, Adobe Inc. recently actually took a plunge on the generative AI and launched something called Firefly. Mid Journey is already out there. It's a small company coming from the lab in California and DALI too. You must have heard about that from the OpenAI guys. So all of these are actually the image generative AI. I'll give you a small example. There's a plain terrain and you can actually type in, please get me a car, red color car of BMW and the car will appear. You can say, I want a tree next to that and the tree will show up. So you need to just imagine, you just need to imagine and the things will come out. It will create an image for you. Well, coming back to the point I started with Siri, with Alexa, Google and Facebook. How can I not talk about Tesla, which has completely changed the landscape of automobile with electric, electric vehicle EV. Now, the, many of you consider Tesla as a car company, but actually guys, it's a technology company. It's an AI company who is using artificial intelligence heavily in that. Think about your self-driving car that's coming out. Think about the robo-taxi, which will hit the ground very soon. And a lot of other things that he's talking about now. You will very soon be calling a taxi and will drop you to the destination with no human interference. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, to sum it up, artificial intelligence is not what I just described. It's a small part of that. Artificial intelligence includes a lot of other things other than what I discussed, like machine learning, deep learning, generative AI, expert systems, language models, computer vision, and so on. But think about it. Is generative AI and artificial AI overall is going to take over humans? Are we not worried about it? Are we not seeing a lot of robots doing all these normal chores of the household work in the factories? They're already heavily employed. Think about that. Is artificial intelligence going to take over all of us? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this video and similar contents, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, all the companies name that I talked about are not recommendations. Consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. This channel is there to help you create financial awareness so that you can act on it and make money. With that, it's a goodbye from your friend, Pankasinha.